Hey everyone, Solar Primal here. Pokemon White with only one Chimchar was fun but difficult. Let's try a silly one. Can I beat Pokemon Fire Red with only one Beldum? Stat wise, Beldum is below what we usually do for these challenges in terms of base stats. High defense and decent attack and special defense. And it was while researching for this challenge I made a discovery. Beldum only knows takedown. You heard that correct. No new moves by level up, no TMs, or move tutors. Takedown is a normal type move with 90 power and 85% accuracy. So we will not only be worrying about our opponent's moves hurting us, but our own move as well. And we may not even get to hit some of the time. From generation 4 and on, Beldum can be taught additional moves, but almost all of these are available after defeating the Elite Four. So this may turn out more interesting or frustrating than I first thought. But we won't know until we try. As always, do keep in mind I'm writing this script as we go through the challenge. So all this is being written before I get started. Comment down below your guesses if I can win or not. I had already suspected that the fire gym would be our biggest hurdle, but now every gym could be troublesome as well as the Elite Four. I simply may have to just close my eyes and hope for the best. Let's go over the rules. Only Beldum can be used in battle. I can also catch other Pokemon for HMs. No glitches or exploits. And no items of battle, with the exception of held items. I know I'm gonna need them this time around. So without any further ado, let's do this. Hold on to your butts. This is gonna be a bumpy rad. Using the Universal Randomizer, we switch Bulbasaur for Beldum. That way our rival picks Charmander as their starter to give us even more of a challenge. Great. We nicknamed Beldum Asta, because in this world of Pokemon that can learn lots of different types of moves, Asta cannot. But it is at least sturdy and can take most hits. Asta has a naughty nature. Attack is up and special defense is down. Not a terrible nature to get. Also has the clear body ability, so at least our stats won't be affected by others. Our first rival battle is over fairly quickly with takedown. This move does more damage to Asta than Charmander's Scratch. We take the victory for now, but I feel like our luck will change as soon as Charmander learns a fire move. While level grinding and EV training in Radiant Force, I notice Asa has a slow level progression rate. This will be okay for EV training, but I can't stay out training for too long with Takedown, taking down our HP. But this is why I'm focusing on battling Caterpies for HP EVs. We go for the optional rival battle, and we take down the team fairly easily. Especially since Charmander never used Ember. What actually has me concerned is the fact that after battling just two Pokemon, we're already under half HP. Arriving in Pewter City, we decide to take on the gym. We dip our toes into the rock gym by taking on the single trainer here. Our first instance of Defense Girl Geodude proves that the battle up ahead could slow us down, but we can push through to eventually knock it out. Let's see how this goes. Gym Leader Brock is up. And as I expected, we get a few good hits in before the defense girl piles up. We even run out of takedowns and resort to using struggle, but we eventually exhaust our own HP and go down. So it is time for my four favorite words. Back to level grinding. We try again at level 16. This time we get unlucky with the first few takedowns, which sets us back a little, but eventually knocking out Geodude. Onyx doesn't go much better with Asa running out of takedown PP and getting bind by Onyx. With 2 HP remaining, our luck was returning. First being freed of bind, then Onyx missing rock tomb, but then us critting a struggle knocking us out due to recoil. Now at level 18. We get a bit luckier with Geodude not using defense curl until it reaches red HP, but even with missing a few takedowns, we managed to knock out Geodude. Onyx is where we had the troubles before, but we push through, take a lot less binds, and slowly but surely knock Brock's last Pokemon out, ending the battle. That is our first gym badge, done and dusted. Can already tell this is going to be a tough fight ahead. Traveling through Mount Moon, our biggest struggle is, which fossil to pick? I don't know, there's a oh, helix fossil, 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 fossel, stone fossil, 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 we picked the Helix Fossil. Moving on. Now in Cerulean City, we take on the gym. 
Misty Staryu held us off for a little as it sets up Harden and we miss with takedown. I was feeling confident since Water Pulse didn't seem to do too much damage on Asta, but Starmie proves me wrong as we are taken down with two Water Pulses. This is what I was worried about with having no ups in our special defense. Sadly, I won't be able to work on our special defense until we reach Route 11. So for now, let's try to take on our rival in the north. But just as I was worried about our special defense stats, our rival's Trimander finally uses Ember to two-shot us down. So it looks like we don't have a choice but to level grind. At level 26, we manage to knock out Charmander before it hits Asa with a second Ember. We then finish off the rest of Gary's team. On our way back from picking up the SS ticket from Bill, I noticed the police officer had moved to the side. So we could move ahead to reach Route 11. Route 11 has a certain Pokemon that will help us EV train Asta. Drowsy. So after hours of EV training, we take another shot at Misty. Now it's either being over leveled at 33 or the efforts of EV training at work. Get it? But we're able to one shot star you. Then we handle the hits from Water Pulse way better and after a couple takedowns, knock out Starmie, ending the battle. Second gym badge, done and dusted. Next up is our rival battle on the SSM. Again, we're able to plow through Pidgeotto and even survive Charmeleon's Ember to two shot it down and then leveling up to 36. Radica is one shot by takedown. So I learned something interesting. When Disable is used on a Pokemon that only has one move available, it forces Struggle to be used in its place. I know this normally happens when the Pokemon runs out of PP for their moves, but still need to see. Moving on the Gym Leader, Lieutenant Surge. Voltorb and Pikachu are both one shot by takedown, but we are left paralyzed by static. We miss our first takedown by paralysis, landing the next one on Raichu, bringing it down to 1 quarter HP. We are hit by a crit shockwave next turn and miss takedown, and then the next shockwave knocks us out. So on our next attempt, we equip the Cherry Berry to help with the paralysis. But it doesn't matter since Voltorb and Pikachu beat up Asta, not paralyzing it going into Raichu. And with the recoil stacked up, we don't survive Shockwave. So on our third attempt, Raichu takes the first takedown, gets healed back to full, takes another takedown, hits Asta with Shockwave taking it to 16 HP, then our next takedown knocks out Raichu. This ends the battle. We still get paralyzed and then the game uses our Cherry Berry anyways despite the battle being over. Ugh. Oh well, moving on to our rival battle in Lavender Tower. Things go pretty well at first, but then Takedown's weakness shows as we nearly win the battle but then we're taken down by our own Takedown. So maybe we'll come back here and try this again. Might as well take on Team Rocket while we're here. Team Rocket boss Giovanni is up. It takes a bit of time, but we eventually knock out his Onyx. But our health is slowly climbing down as we knock out Kangaskhan. So Rhyhorn simply wipes out our remaining HP with Stomp. Let's try that again. But even with us being in better shape going into Rhyhorn, we still run out of HP before we're able to knock it out. This is what I've expected will happen eventually. I'm gonna need to be a little higher in levels if I hope to outlast our opponents. Well, let's take on the Celadon City Gym. And before you ask, I went around battling trainers I initially skipped to level up and finish EV training. Takedown is almost enough to knock out Victory Bell, but with it surviving, Asa is struck with Stun Spore, becoming paralyzed. This proves to be a thorn in our side, as the paralysis and Asa missing here and there helps delay Victory Bell's eventual downfall. The fun times with paralysis don't end there as Tangler sets up Ingrain to heal itself every turn while Asa is slowly chipped away of its HP. But we eventually do land a second hit of takedown to knock out Tangler. Vileplume survives the first takedown as we go down to red HP. Now we win on a technicality as we get a double knockout. Since I have Patreon, the Meowth, our cut user in the party, the game considers us the victor since Erica is out of Pokemon to use. We would have won on a few more attempts anyway, so let's move on. Fourth gym badge done and dusted. Alright, with renewed confidence, let's take on Giovanni again. 
but we're still taken down by our own recoil damage. So let's give Asa a citrus berry. Seems to help our opponents in the past challenges, I guess. And it looks like that did the trick. The citrus berry managed to keep us in way better standing going into Rhyhorn. And now with self scope in hand, let's retry taking on our rival at the Lavender Tower. And with some better luck this time around, his team is taken down before our HP depletes this time. But now we have another problem. Takedown can't damage ghost type Pokemon. So the solution is to use up the PP of our takedown so that we are forced to use struggle. As well as bringing a ton of super potions to heal ourselves back up, not affecting the takedown PP. That also means avoiding the healing pad higher up in the tower. But then the ghostly Marowak knocks out Asa easily with Boomerang. Our next try goes better as we handle the Boomerang better. Continuing on, we level up to 50. We look nice and tanky. Not a lot else going on for us, but it works so far. We then clear out Team Rocket from Lavender Tower, rescuing Mr. Fuji, and he gifts us the Poke Flute. This is important because it allows us to wake up Snorlax blocking the way so that we can find ourselves leftovers. Well, I guess we need the item finder to make that happen too. That means catching 30 different types of Pokemon. Yay. Now let's try taking on our next gym. Poison gym leader Koga's up. We take out coughing in one shot with a crit takedown. But then we're locked into a stalemate against Muck where we expand all of our takedowns. Muck using up acid armor and minimize to its max, then forcing it to use sludge and toxic, which have no effect on us. After a lot of back and forth, we struggle our way to eventually knock out Muck. Coughing then takes itself out with self-destruct, and then Weezing goes down after six struggles. Those leftovers certainly came in handy. Next is our rival battle at Sylphco. We're able to knock out Pidgeot with two takedowns, but despite being 22 levels ahead of Charizard and clearing all the Team Rocket grunts combined with Burn, we are knocked out after a couple flamethrowers. This makes me really worried about the championship battle. So we battled the dojo in Saffron City thinking I'll gain a few levels. We don't. While we're here, we pick up Hitmonlee. I knew if I didn't say which one I picked, you would all ask. In fact, ask anyways. Comments are good for the YouTube algorithm. Well, a bit of humor should help us get through some of the level grinding, I hope. We try again at level 64, we fail. We try again at level 66, we fail, four times. Our biggest issue is that Charizard outspeeds us even at this level. Looking at the Pokemon damage calculator, Asa would need to be level 82 if we hope to outspeed our rival's level 40 Charizard. Alternatively, at level 75, we could have a possibility at surviving two hits of Flamethrower. We may just have to move on at the moment, as crazy as it sounds. So, Gym Leader Blaine is up. We're able to one-shot Growlithe with Takedown. We nearly knock out Pointa with Takedown, but then it survives and hits Asa with Fire Blast, dealing heavy damage. Luckily, the next Takedown crits to knock out Pointa. But then Rapidash finishes us off with Fire Blast. Somehow, after so many attempts, Fire Blast almost never misses. The only good thing we got going for ourselves is that we're immune to Intimidate. On one attempt, we survive Fire Blast with 6 HP, but then miss Takedown. Though the recoil damage would have knocked us out anyways. We eventually get a run where Rapidash misses Fire Blast, we get Takedown damage in, survive the next Fire Blast to knock out Rapidash with Takedown. And then Arcanine is hit with Takedown, misses Fire Blast, we missed Takedown before getting knocked out by Fire Blast. That was our closest run yet, but we need to level grind. For a brief moment, we reach level 69. Nice. Before continuing on with our level grind. So after many, many attempts, 25 by my count, we managed to one-shot Rapidash with a single Takedown, leading us to face off against Arcanine with 160 HP in the tank. The first takedown brings Arcanine down to under half, bringing ourselves down to 142 HP from recoil. Fire Blast lands gain acid to 11 HP, healing back to 23 HP with leftovers. A final takedown hits, Arcanine goes down to 0 and Asa to 7, ending the battle. There are still two more badges to go, 
and a rivalry match at Silphco. Speaking of which, the question is, can we beat a level 40 Charizard now? After finally surviving its flamethrower, we knock it out with a second takedown. Good. Things are looking up. Or so I thought. Gyarados survives takedown, but barely, and then hits Asa with a bite for 7 damage. We then miss the next two takedowns, as we are knocked out by a couple Dragon Rages. What is this challenge? So on our next attempt. Like before, Gyarados survives the first takedown and bites Asta. We miss the next takedown, it's like deja vu or something, and take a Dragon Rage, going down to 6 HP. Leftovers keeps us going as we land another takedown to knock out Gyarados. Execute also survives the first takedown, as the recoil brings Asta to 5 HP, as we are struck with Stun Spore. Our HP goes up a little with leftovers to 17, as Confusion hits dealing 2 damage, and we somehow hold on with 14 HP knocking out Execute with another takedown. Last up is Alkazam. Leftovers pumps more life back into Asa as Alkazam sets up Reflect causing Takedown to hit with less impact. The Recoil throws our HP down to 8, but Leftovers brings us back to 20. Alkazam then performs Future Sight as we remain paralyzed this turn, giving Asa a chance to recover more HP. Things are looking dire. But for some reason, Alkazam uses Future Sight again. The move fails and we take down our rival's last Pokemon. Asa living with 29 HP, ending the battle. I'm just gonna say it now. I'm not very hopeful that we can face our rival again, let alone two more times. But, we shall see how far we get. With that out of the way, it's time to take on Team Rocket boss, Giovanni. Nidorino is one shot by takedown. Queen is two shot by takedown. Kangaskhan is also two shot by takedown. Rhyhorn takes a bit more time due to the rock typing. Luckily for us, Giovanni's Rhyhorn doesn't have a ground type move. Yet. And we eventually knock it out. With Team Rocket cleared out, we can now take on the Saffron Sage Gym. While making our way to Sabrina, we had to use up the power points for takedown to use Struggle as some of the trainers here use ghost type Pokemon. This makes our battle against Sabrina go by a little differently. Kadabra is one shot by a crit struggle. Venomoth is two shot by struggle. Mr. Mime takes a first struggle and hits Asa with Psybeam. Of course, this isn't very effective, so Mr. Mime is healed twice before eventually being knocked out by a barrage of struggles. Alkazam sets up Calm Mine and then is nearly knocked out by struggle. It then uses Future Sight, but it can't predict itself being knocked out by struggle, ending the battle. One more gym badge to go. Let's see how we fare against Giovanni's ground type Pokemon. And his first Pokemon, Rhyhorn, is able to knock out Asta. We were close, but no dice. Well, I'm gonna go on vacation with Bill to the Sevi Islands. And just like a shonen anime time jump, we're back at level 82. But we still can't even defeat Giovanni's first Pokemon. The numbers just don't agree with us. So I do what any sensible person would do. Scavenge as many rare candies as I could find. At the moment, I've collected 12. That's all we can obtain at the moment. But this does mean we'll have to do some more level grinding. 88 to be exact. I am aware that we have one more rare candy at Victory Road, but with the way things are going, we may not even make it there. My notes say, goes to cry and level grind. Sounds appropriate for this. So we try again level 88, we fail. Again at level 90, we still fail. Level 92, 96, 98, and 100. We cannot defeat Giovanni. We need a perfect run, no misses, or else this challenge is over. But even on a perfect run, it's not enough. I think this challenge is over. We've done EV training, level grinding to 100. Here I am strategizing to get Asa to survive enough to take on the second Rhyhorn, but there's still a Rhydon waiting in the rafters. I hate to say it, but it looks like I can't beat Pokemon Fire Red with one Beldum. 
The cards were just not in our favor this time around, no matter how hard we try. So this lands us our first official defeat. I don't really count the previous challenges defeats because those were for optional battles. We at least were able to beat the champion in those runs. This one... Yeah, we got stopped at the last gym. It's not to say that it is impossible. I'm just not able to accomplish this challenge. <sighs> that was a tough one. I'm not going to be giving up on these challenges. In fact, I have a fun one in store for the next one. Can I beat Pokemon Platinum with a team of Leafeon and Glaceon? Follow me on Twitter for updates on videos and other weird stuff I'm up to. Give the video a like if you liked it. Subscribe if you want more. Click the bell to be notified when a new video goes up. Also, leave a comment down below on your suggestions for future challenge videos. So, until then you guys, this is Solar Primal signing out and bye for now.